Stretching over a thousand miles, the Himalayas are the world's greatest mountain range, through which flow some of the fastest and most dangerous rivers on the planet. Few fish are strong enough to inhabit these terrifying waters, and those that do are the champions of freshwater fighting fish. Ever since the days of the Raj, the Himalayas have exerted an irresistible fascination for anglers. Adventure fisherman Jeremy Wade has spent over 20 years in pursuit of some of the world's most challenging fish. He's traveling to the Indian Himalayas to pit his skills against these mountains and their monsters. Like all anglers, I'm in search of that ultimate angler's dream, the idea of wild, rugged scenery and water full of fish. And I think I might have found just such a place. I've been doing some reading lately, some old Victorian books, and if just a fraction of what those books say is true, this could be the place for that ultimate angling experience. Oh, good grief. Varied excitements of a fishing trip in wild places are a panacea for all worldly cares and troubles. Many a sportsman has truly said he would rather catch a big marcia than shoot a tiger. Arriving in the foothills, Jeremy's first port of call is a luxury resort, where he hopes there's a chance of hooking something big. I've installed myself in a rather comfortable lodge, and there's a little river, I mean, well, scarcely more than a stream, running alongside. And apparently there's a pool somewhere down here, and they've got some fish in it. Right, so, a bit of a vantage point here down to the pool. And, blimey, there's something big in the water, but not, not what I was expecting. I don't see that every day. Uh, yeah, the elephant having an afternoon bath. That is an incredible sight, but more incredible, it's just stuffed with fish. It's just thick with them, and they're just within feet of this elephant bathing. These are massive. They are unmistakable torpedo-shaped greyhounds of fish, just sort of lazily, sinuously, just interweaving in the in the current. Incredible. The golden Himalayan masseer is Indian's aquatic equivalent of the tiger. Growing to the size of a man, this turbocharged carp is reckoned to be the world's greatest fighting freshwater fish. These masseer, however, are not looking for a fight, but a free lunch. Twice a day, hotel manager Ache Gao supervises the feeding of the masseer in a short stretch of river the resort has protected for the past five years. What weight of food do you think you put in per day? Uh, in the morning, about uh, 20 kilograms of uh, this uh, that's flour paste. 20 kilos of 20 kilograms a day. There's one or two fish in the water down here. And uh, there's a possibility they might take a bait. Yeah, anybody seeing me here might guess this is going to be a little bit easy, perhaps, compared to normal fishing. Yeah, here it is a bit easier. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And just flick it out. And feeling the line. The line hasn't tightened yet. And the line is still loose. Not so stupid. Not so stupid. And... Oh, no. Too quick, too quick, too quick, too quick. Too quick. <laughs> and... Ah! Yeah. I think, the, I think the line went. The line went. <laughs> it's been taken away? Yeah. And there's a knot, there's a knot, there's a knot, there's a knot. And the line's tightening. The line's tightening, and there's one on the end. There's one on the end. And taking off down the river and heading down into that shallow water. And I think stopping on the edge of the shallow water. Oh, there he goes. Line cutting through the water. Very, very, I mean, the stamina of this fish is incredible. Woo! Now then. Wait till, yeah. 
He's, he's coming very close to the rocks here. It needs to be up on the surface, up on the surface. Oops, no. Right. Hold, hold it, no, hold the net out. Just hold it out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let it come over and lift. Lovely. Not as easy, not as easy as I thought, but uh, the fish on the bank. Brilliant, thanks very much. Yeah. There we go. Catching the fish from the resort was a great experience. Wonderful to actually hold the fish that I've read so much about, but it was, okay, a slightly contrived, tame experience. I doubt the Victorian gents would have stayed in a place quite like that. So if I am to experience anything remotely like the fishing they experienced, I'm gonna to have to pack my bags and head deeper into the mountains. I was sitting in England thinking perhaps my fishing days were over and a friend gave me a copy of a classic angling book and from that moment on I was scarcely able to sleep even. I was just waking up thinking I've just got to get myself into the Himalayas and experience some of the things that those old writers experienced. In his quest for this fine fish, the angler is taken into some of the grandest scenery in the world where turbulent rivers wind their way through dark gorges clad in fir groves and rhododendrons, with perhaps a glimpse of the eternal snows. I don't think the Victorian gents would have uh, quite been travelling like this. OK, a vehicle is travelling in style in some sense, but up on the roof, I think he'd have been downstairs. After 16 hours of bone-shaking jeep ride, Jeremy arrives at what he hopes will be his angling paradise. Well, how amazing to now arrive and be almost within touching distance of the water, uh, after just seeing it tantalizing in the distance for so long. And uh, it just gets better the closer you get to it. Incredible, just really sort of dark and enigmatic, and it's really almost smelling of fish. Well, the obvious thing looking at this water here, and also because it's nice and instant, is to uh, give it a go on some artificial lures. Obviously, I don't know exactly what's going to work here, so I've got not quite everything, including the kitchen sink, but a fair old, fair old selection of stuff. Now, the old books tended to uh, tended to talk about natural coloration on these lures, so I'll definitely give that a go. But I've also brought some more modern, wacky, lurid designs as well. But then just uh, also make it up as I go along. First fish, it's the first fish from this river. Just great to have something hang on the lure because I've just been fishing for about an hour, I suppose, with nothing doing at all. Small fish, but uh, very welcome. If anything, just to get the reflexes going. It's so easy after flashing the water with nothing happening. Just to get into that sort of torpor almost where you think nothing's going to happen. And if that happens and a big fish takes, then you're just going to mess it up. And. Uh, it's a fish. Nice to catch a fish. A good confidence boost anyway to get even, even a little one. First fish, significant fish, whatever, even though it's small, first fish from this spot. So, very nice. Having landed his first wild mass here, Jeremy is now after bigger fish, but it's not going to be easy.
Jeremy Wade is deep in the Indian Himalayas in search of the golden masseur, the world's hardest fighting freshwater fish. With a couple of small masseur under his belt, he now wants to find some bigger fish. So he's going in search of help. What I need is some local intelligence. And I've been asking the locals uh, how to get started. And then one name keeps coming up, somebody called Vinay. He knows about the masseur in this river. Masir enthusiast Vinay Badola was born in the mountains and has been fishing throughout the Himalayas since childhood. Fishing for these wild fish is not easy and I'm very lucky to have found Vinay. He's a, he's a wonderful source of local knowledge. He is hopefully giving me a shortcut to laying my hands on some of these fish. Even this impressive specimen is a tiddler compared to some of the monsters that swim these waters. The masseer is an intelligent fish that is difficult to catch. Choosing the right lure can make the difference between success and failure. The standard mache lure box would consist of uh, just about five or six different pieces to cover different water situations throughout the fishing day. Spoons and uh, spinners for early mornings. Mm -hmm. Spinners, good vibration, nice flash, excellent in uh, fast rapids, broken water, where a fish can be fooled very easily, brings fish in from a distance. As the day goes on in clear water and bright sunlight, things are very easily discernible as fakes. So we need to start switching over to more natural baits something like plugs. Uh, this one here is pretty good. OK, so basically the principles are fairly simple. In low light and broken water, I need something that flashes and throbs, so either a spinner or a spoon. And then in the flat water and when the light comes up, um, one of the plugs, which looks more like a natural fish. Right, so that's my kit then, the kind of selection I could just drop in a pocket. Uh, a couple of spoons, a couple of spinners, and natural looking plug, another natural looking plug, and one with a nice bit of a wiggle on it. Overlooking a fearsome rapid, Jeremy is putting Vinny's tips into practice. Not huge, but in this fairly mad water, I have given a little bit of thought to what I might do if I hook one. I'm going to have to run down the rock. <laughs> right. Now then. Oops. <laughs> the fish has come down that mad rapid. Luckily, he's not too big. And he's now in the shallows. A big one, and he'd be around the bend by now, and I'd be just uh, stumbling down this bit here. Still kicking a little bit. And, whoops, luckily the fish is about as tired as I am. <laughs> I put him in the tail, which makes it, always makes it slightly more dramatic. Right, bit of British unsportingness there. <laughs> Sporting value zero, excitement. Excitement quite high, quite high, I don't know, six or seven. It's all good practice for the really big one when it comes along. Taking a break from the river, Jeremy has been invited to lunch by the local fishing fraternity. Sit, sit here, is it? Oh, oh. OK. Right, how do I start on this? Hungry, but held back by technique. Oh, yeah. Mix, 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 yeah. mix, mix everything. Mix, yeah. Yeah. Like this, this, yeah. yeah. This, yeah. <laughs> I'm spraying yeah, it all over the carpet here, but yeah. uh, I'll get that. I might, yeah, I might, yeah, I might yeah, eventually yeah. get. How's this? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like a ball. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. The whole hand. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna need it. Mm? Very tasty. Yeah. <laughs> it was very tasty. Yeah. So I, I am. Um, I'm fisherman. I'm a fisherman. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fisherman from from England. F fishing. Yeah. Yeah. From <laughs> England. England, England. Yeah. yeah. And um, 
this this river here has has big fish, mm. big fish, small fish, big ones, small ones. Big size. Yeah. Twenty kg or fifty kg? Fifty. Twenty kg, fifty kg. Yeah. Really? No problem. Big one, easy. Big one, nah. Big, big one is more problem. One kg. One so, kg. Uh, so, right, one so kg, one, two kg. one kg, two kg, easy. Easy. Kg. Uh, high kg is over. Difficult. Very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. Five kgs and over. The weather in the Himalayas can change in minutes, and Jeremy has been caught out in a sudden thunderstorm. The wet is just about bearable, but the thing that makes it potentially dangerous is those flashes of lightning. I'm a long way down from the mountaintops here, but nevertheless, even the, uh, the stray chance of one of those uh, flashes of lightning finding the tip of my rod, uh, you know, I find myself prematurely a pile of ashes. The water is turning to soup. Um, hardly the medium for a, a sight feeding predator to, uh, to hunt in. And um, it appears I'm rather at the mercy of the weather. The storm rages on for four long days. The weather at the moment is meant to be the very occasional thunderstorm, once a week, once every 10 days, something like that. But uh, it just settled into a pattern, a pattern of almost every day. So this is just, I'm just sitting it out, sitting it out and hoping that the weather uh, passes over. But uh, no idea how long that's going to take. With a break in the weather, Jeremy and Vinny head out to fish a now murky river. Let it flow down. Hmm? Let it flow down. Let it flow down. It'd be great if you could get a really long cast out almost all the way to those rocks over there. Right. Because uh, the longer your bait... Oh! Mm. oh. Whoa! Was he after it? He was after yes. one. It's very short-sighted fish. <laughs> the water's murky. The water's murky. So, <laughs> so he actually it, it went for it. And he must have travelled six or seven foot through the hour. I, thought. Easy. I mean, very low trajectory. Easy. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but I'm just, yeah. I just saw a flash of green, yeah. silver, and uh, yellow fins. So if that had just been connected with the bait, I'd have known about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Still out there? Yes, well, definitely. Yeah, Possibly a bigger one. All right. The Victorian anglers never wrote about their blank days. The impression is, uh, you know, one glorious big bag of fish after another. Or maybe that's the, that's the bits you remember from the book. So you come here and you expect to have day after day of bent rods, whereas mine has just been sort of hanging limply. And, you know, that would not make for very interesting reading for anybody, no matter how keen they are. If you see the river discoloured, you had very much better not waste your labour and your patience on it, for you may be sure you will not catch a single fish. You must wait till the river is clear again. With two days of clear weather, the river finally clears. Jeremy must seize this opportunity if he is to stand any chance of catching his fish. It's more like it's on the edge of that. 
moving water. Feel the mirror. Get. Good, that is a fish, that is a fish. That is a fish, that's not a rock, it's a very animated rock if it's a rock. It's, it was kicking, it's now, it's still there. There was a bit of a kick at the surface. Just keeping an eye out now to see if there's any obvious snags. Now when it's on a shorter line, I'm going to just loosen the clutch off a wee bit. It's taking right off the reel. And it's really hammering its head away. There's like something's whacking the tip of the rod. Now the thing to do now is look around for a place to maybe bring it in away from these rocks. I think it's getting quite tired now, but I need to tie that quite well in this water. No question about that being a fish. It's not a monster, very strong fish though. Uh, the size of this multiplied up five, ten times. Uh, quite frightening in this water. Well, looking at this fish, I'm scarcely even able to believe it. Uh, after all the things that have gone wrong, all the effort, finally, here it is on the bank. The fish that I was after, not a fish that has been hand-fed and pampered, perhaps, but something that has actually lived and battled in these rivers. A truly wild Himalayan marsia. It is the strength and beauty of the golden Himalayan masseur that have made this fish the supreme prize for generations of anglers. Having landed his first sizable wild masseur, Jeremy is ready for the next stage of his journey, in search of the ultimate angling experience. Good grief, good grief. 